Seattle Seahawks football is back, and this year it is going to look much different than it has at any point over the last 14 years. The Pete Carroll era has come to a close, and it is now Mike McDonald at the helm. The Baltimore Ravens under defensive coordinator Mike McDonald over the past two years had one of the best defenses in all of football, and he has now taken the reins in Seattle, becoming the youngest current coach in the NFL. Ryan Grubb is also the new offensive coordinator, joining the Seahawks after a national championship appearance with the University of Washington Huskies last year, now looking to take the Seahawks offense to new heights. And in week one's matchup against the Denver Broncos in Seattle, they will be facing off against a rookie quarterback out of the University of Oregon in Bo Nix, and the offense of mind in Sean Payton. The Broncos after last season have now moved on from Russell Wilson and they are hoping that Bo Nix is the new answer. It'll be a great matchup this Sunday in Seattle so let's get into the Seahawks Broncos preview with Will Ordner. But before we do, if you're a fan of the Seattle Seahawks, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM. We'll be doing pregame previews every week, as well as postgame recaps. And if you or someone you know is thinking about buying, selling, or refinancing a property in the Pacific Northwest, make sure to reach out to myself, Connor Webb, the Couch GM, as I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, as I'm looking to help as many sports fans and athletes as I can to get into their dream home. If you'd like to get in touch, my contact information will be in the description of this video. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, Will, thanks for joining me on. It's going to be an exciting first weekend in, of NFL football, of Seahawks football. It is the new era of Seahawks football. It's the Mike McDonald era. I'm excited to, to get into this preview of week one with the, the matchup with the Broncos with you. How have you been? How are things? And you know, what are your thoughts on the moves that the Seahawks have made this offseason with the coaching change and then also the players that they brought in? Yeah, I mean, right now I've just been diving into uh, Seahawks preseason and Honestly, I've been getting into college football. I love college football. Obviously, you know me. I'm working with the Ducks. So you know I'm watching every single Oregon game. I'm. I'm we're going to be okay. Don't worry. They're going to be okay. I'm going to ask you about that Idaho game then. I mean. We're going to be okay. The O-line had a bad day. Everyone else I really enjoyed. I'm a little worried about Gabriel's hand. You smack it on a guy's helmet. That's never a good sign. But the O-line, we had some injuries. We're going to be okay. I'm here to put out the fire. There's no, hey, this is fine. Fire memes going on. <laughs> we'll talk to you after Boise State. If uh, some of those same issues persist, then then we might have some problems. But right now, everything's okay. We're going to be fine. Um, look, I'll tell you right now, I really love the move by the Seahawks. It kind of feels like they went with a zig while everyone else is zagging. Um, they went with the young hotshot defensive coordinator to be their head coach, while most people are going with the young hotshot offensive coordinator. Obviously, since Sean McVay worked, Kyle Shanahan, Zach Taylor, uh, all those types of guys, those seem to be the hot hire right now. What does Seattle do? They go get McDonald, who in his time at Baltimore, he was absolutely on fire. This defense that he runs, it kind of changes week to week, but it still has the same principles. And that allows him to put his uh, safeties and his D linemen and his linebackers. Some weeks they're playing different spots or they're used differently just because that's a weakness that the team they're going up against presents. And he really just takes his strengths of his defense and matches it to the weaknesses of the offense that they're going against. That's why last year when you watched a lot of Kyle Hamilton, you're like, this guy's playing safety. He just had like five or six blitzes one week and he had a couple sacks. And then the next week he's dropping in coverage every single time and he's got a pick or two. That's just because of what the matchups presented. So I'm excited to see what McDonald can do. Um, obviously, the young buck, Murphy, dominating right now in the trenches. Uh, can't ask for more, especially at a guy who is in your three-tech spot. We've seen a lot of success in the NFL, specifically for defenses, when they have a guy like Byron Murphy playing that three-tech. I'm looking at Chris Jones. I'm looking at Aaron Donald. Why? Because they're going to get a pass rush right up the middle, and that's going to scare the quarterback the most. Don't get me wrong. Edge rushers are terrifying, and there's a reason why they make so much money. But when you get that rush that's right in your face, you can't ignore it. You see it. It's right there. You might be trying to look down the field, but in your peripheral, you see that guy coming right at you. That's always going to be a big bugaboo for quarterbacks. And then he also plays the run extremely well. If you want to go small, he can go uh, to the one tech. If you want to go big, he can even play a defensive end position, depending on how you situate that defensive line. I really, really like what Seattle has done in the offseason. Those are the big ones, obviously. The new head coach and your big uh, first-round draft pick. And then also Ryan Grubb coming in, offensive coordinator. You know, what he did with UW football last year, taking them to the national title game, 
And with the weapons that the, the Seahawks offense has with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Kenneth Walker, all these guys, you know, you got Romo Dunze that was with the Huskies, Jalen Polk, you got DK Metcalf right there and some other guys that are similar skill sets. What do you think that Ryan Grubb coming to this offense might be able to bring in? I think you're going to see a more high flying offense. Uh, the thing that I really want to see out of Grubb's offense is something that I feel like you really haven't seen in the Pete Carroll era. And I don't necessarily know if that's Pete's fault. I don't know if it's mainly like a Russell Wilson issue that they just transferred over uh, with Geno Smith, but I'd really like them to attack the middle of the field, especially with the new rules nowadays. Like you don't have to worry about guys getting decleated like, 10, 15 years ago, if you're Jackson Smith and Jigba, if you're Tyler Lockett, you don't want to go across the middle because someone's going to go take your head off. Nowadays, that's a 15-yard penalty, and we're moving the ball forward. So that's something that I'd really like to see out of Ryan Grubb's offense. Uh, I still want it to be kind of built off of the run first. I think when you have this type of offensive line where you got road graders, specifically with the upgrades that you've made at center uh, and at your two guard positions, I would really want them to keep feeding Charbonnet keep feeding K9. And I really think that you're going to see a big takeoff in week one from K9. That's a little preview of a preview. Um, and then I think you're going to see Jackson Smith and Jigma emerge into that two role, that two wide receiver spot, and DK really ascend into that one spot. At this point, Tyler Lockett's been in the NFL a very, very long time, and he's been a very good receiver, but you've seen it year after year after year where he has to get down. He can't take hits anymore, and he's a smart enough wide receiver to understand that, obviously. It's why he's been able to play the last couple of years, but I do feel like Tyler Lockett is finally going to start taking that regression that we've talked about, but that's a perfect spot for him. He can be the third wide receiver where he becomes more of a change of pace guy. He's still going to be able to go across the middle. You can use him on quick slants. You can get the ball out to him on halo screens. You can get the ball out to him on tunnel screens. And he's still going to be effective. And then when you have a fourth wide receiver in Jake Bobo, he's not going to outrun anybody, but he's going to get open because of how crisp his routes are. Geno Smith is going to have a lot of weapons on the outside. And I really do like this Seahawks team. I believe they're over under on this year. Last time I saw it, I believe it was eight and a half. It might have possibly popped up to nine. I don't think it's that crazy to say that this is a 10 win team. I really, really don't. I think the Seahawks team might be a little underrated coming into this year. I mean, I agree. Just looking at pff.com, you know, they have their rankings. Seahawks are ranked 21st, tied for 21st with the Chargers, and they're predicted to have 7.9 wins. Those, so, those are the two teams. If you tell me right now that the Seahawks are in lockstep with the Chargers, I don't really hate that because they're my second team that I would say is underrated. You got Harbaugh coming in, and I understand that you lost a lot of weapons on the outside, but when has Harbaugh ever been a loser? Like, really think about what Jim Harbaugh has done. And even when he had his struggles at Michigan, he was still building towards that champion. Even when he had his struggles in San Francisco, even when he had his struggles in Stanford, he was building towards something. And he builds his team in the trenches. And then it opens up everything else because he's not afraid to run the ball when he needs to because they're going to get the yards that they absolutely have to. And then he's got a star quarterback in Justin Herbert that – can pick apart defenses, but he's not going to be asked to be the whole enchilada. Like before when it was with Staley, they were going to win games only because Justin Herbert was going to play amazing. That's not what Harbaugh is going to ask Herbert. And I think that's going to be a big step in growth for Herbert as well. So if you're telling me that we're looking at the Seahawks and Chargers kind of in the same spot, I don't hate that. And I really do think a lot of people are underrating the Seahawks team. And honestly, I think a lot of people are overrating the Cardinals, and a little bit to a degree, the Rams. The Rams are ranked uh, 12th on PFF. The team right behind the Seahawks, mm -hmm. the Denver Broncos. They should 23rd. be a little further down. They're, they're projected for seven wins. Um, but, yeah, I mean, a new offensive coordinator. You got Mike McDonald, the head coach, who apparently is going to be also the play caller on defense on top of being the head coach. And so Ryan Grubb might be able to get out of this this offense something that the seahawks haven't been able to get out of in the past and then you know in one of our prior videos talking about mike mcdonald the seahawks had something like the 22nd you know best defense in the league the prior couple of years whereas the ravens consistently have had a top 10 one of the best defenses in the league with mike mcdonald at the at the helm of the defense so we, we we're seeing a completely different look 
on this Seahawks team, people just don't know what to really expect. So that's probably why they're ranked kind of where they are. Yeah, well, I also think that it's easy. Like when you look at the Seahawks team, it's like, ah, it's the middle of the road. And honestly, everyone hates Geno. Like I'm not necessarily completely sold on Geno Smith. Like, can you win a Super Bowl with Geno Smith? Probably not. But can you be really damn good with Geno Smith? Yeah, you can be really damn good with Geno Smith. And if that defense can get back to what it was back in the early 2010s, I mean, shoot, you can win with anyone. Now, I'm not saying that McDonald's going to come in instantly. Boom, Legion of Boom, we're back, right? Like, that's not what I'm (laughs) saying. But there's a reason why a lot of defensive coordinators are now getting hired out of the Mike McDonald tree. Or defensive coordinators are going to McDonald to learn, why do you run your defense this way? Why do you do this? How do you make this matchup go in your favor? How do you attack zone? How do you attack... Uh, you know, running the football, How, all these different things. McDonald has been excellent at it, and a lot of teams are starting to copy him. Now, when you look at the Seahawks the last two or three years, they're the bottom third, bottom fourth when it comes to stopping the run. When Legion of Boom was in their heyday, that's what made him so great is because every team had to throw on them, and then they were able to get a lot of interceptions and get a lot of turnovers. That wasn't happening at the back half of Pete Carroll's career. And you know what the Ravens did excellent at the last few? They were in the top half, top third, top fourth when it came to stopping the run. So if you're telling me that we're going to get a defensive coordinator in here who knows how to stop the run and actually can implement that with this defense, I'm all for it. I think you're going to have a big year out of Julian Love if he can stay healthy, and I think you're going to have a big year out of Devin Witherspoon if he can stay healthy. Because what they're going to be able to do using Witherspoon in the slot as a nickel corner at times going out and playing the outside corner position, going up and moving around with the best wide receiver on different teams. That's going to be a big deal. When it comes to love, look at him in the Kyle Hamilton role. Now, is he Kyle Hamilton? No, I'm not going to come out here and claim that. But you're looking at a guy who's a top 100 player in the NFL this last season, voted on by his peers. So you know the dude can go out and ball. And now you're going to be able to use him in the box when you need to. But you also know that if you drop him back in coverage, you're actually going to have a safety that can cover guys. And that's what the big problem with Jamal Adams was. Like you brought him over and you paid a bunch of money for a guy that you knew could play in the box and you thought he could cover. And Blitzboy really couldn't cover. He struggled at it. It feels like you finally have that piece in Julian Love. And he can almost kind of fit that Cam Chancellor role. Like what Cam Chancellor was able to do, people don't talk about enough. He could fill run gaps when he needed to. He could take on offensive linemen, shed blocks, and tackle running backs. And then at the same token, he could go and guard Demarius Thomas one-on-one. That's something Julian Love can do 85% of. So I'm excited to see what they do with uh, him in the defense. I personally am picking up the Seahawks in my fantasy leagues. You know, they're they're available on waivers. So I'm taking taking them when while they're still there. Heading into the the week one matchup against the the Denver Broncos, it's going to be the my, the offensive mind and Sean Payton versus the de- defensive mind and Mike McDaniel. Rookie quarterback Bo Nix out of the University of Oregon, first NFL start is coming in the, the hostile territory of Lumen Field in Seattle against the Seahawks defense. That's going to be a, be a tough environment for him to get his first start in. Maybe he hands the ball off to Javante Williams all game, and that's kind of their game plan. What do you see out of the, the the Denver Broncos coming into Seattle, and what do you expect from this game? Well, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, I'm higher on Bo Nix than I think most people are. Look, whatever. I watched him for two years at Oregon, and so I've gotten to see his game. I might be a little biased, but I really like what Bo Nix was able to do at Oregon. I think he's going to be able to do those same, same things in the NFL. I'm not as high on Sean Payton as I think most people are. Look, if you kind of look at his resume, you look at Mike McCarthy's resume, They ain't that different. They ain't that different now. So it's kind of a yin and yang thing here for me. If I'm Denver, what I'm going to ask Bo Nix to do is just be accurate and be smart. And that's kind of the strength of what Bo is. Bo isn't afraid to take what the defense gives him. When he was at Auburn, he struggled a lot because he always tried to make the big play, the big home run move. And when he got to Oregon, Dillingham came in there and was like, hey, man, Take here's your two reads. If they're not there, run. And then the next year he got Coach Stein after he had made that improvement with Dillingham. And Coach Stein was like, Hey, 
you're going to make three, four reads. I'm going to teach you how to do it quick. And then if it's not there, run. Because Bo can run. He's he's an athletic quarterback. And that's kind of carried over here to Sean Payton. And Sean Payton's offense is designed for a quarterback like Bo Nix. He wants to get the ball out quickly and be accurate in short passes and even medium passes. Like we always made fun of Michael Thomas for being slant boy for all those years. And it's like, well, that's all they have him run. They're not having him run too many deep routes because that's not what the offense asks him to do. So it's a perfect fit here between Sean Payton and Bo Nix. Like I think if Bo Nix is in, I don't know, maybe he's going to like the commanders or he's going to the bears where he's going to be asked to throw the ball deeper more. You might see some more struggles with that, but because he matches up with Peyton's offense, I think it works out nicely for both him and for Peyton. That being said, I don't think that he has a ton of wide receivers to throw to right now. He's got Sutton and that's kind of it. Jerry Judy is gone. Although there are rumors that he might just be a Jag and that's okay. Uh, So I think that Seattle gets the job done. You're going up against a rookie quarterback in CenturyLink, uh, Lumen now, excuse me. You need to take care of business. And the best way to do that is to dial up pressure on him early and see if you can get him a little stressed out. I don't think that you have any wide receivers that you have to worry about getting put in one-on-one matchups or man matchups with your corners. So I'd like to see McDonald and that defense dial up some pressures. I'd like to see Murphy try and get a rush on the inside and get Bo uncomfortable early. If you can do that and you can stop the run, I think you might have a couple turnovers that you get out of Bo Nix. And then all of a sudden you're up 14 going into the fourth quarter and you can just sit on your lead and come out with a victory. I was talking to a Broncos fan earlier today and he said that their game plan is going to be handing the ball to Javante for a bit, and then also hitting the Seahawks with a lot of crossing routes because the potential weakness with the Seahawks defense is the linebackers. The secondary is solid. The line is, is there. So if they can take advantage of that linebacker, you know, uh, spacing there, that's the potential game plan that we might see from them. Mm -hmm. Um, one note is that this is the first Broncos first round draft pick to start the first game as a quarterback in their history. Yeah. Uh, John Elway was not drafted by the Broncos, but he did start. He was a first round draft pick, but this is like a historic time for the Broncos. This is like one of those, you know, they, they've tried everyone at quarterback basically since Peyton Manning, you know, they had the Russell Wilson experiment. Now they're going to Bo Nix and trying to get that next franchise quarterback. This is going to be a, a big game. And, you know, a big start to a new era for both teams. Right. Well, and look, I, I think that they didn't want to start Bo Nix. You could listen to Sean Payton throughout the preseason. And he kept saying, well, Bo's doing really good, but still an open competition. Bo's doing really good, still open competition. And it's like, dude, he's 75 or 76% completion percentage right now. He's led two dr- touchdown drives in his first preseason game. He throws for a touchdown in his third. I mean, it just feels like anytime he was out there, at minimum, they were moving the ball. At maximum, they were getting into the end zone and getting six. And I understand that right now I sound like a Bo Nix apologist. I promise you I'm not. But I do think really highly of him, and I think that his game is going to translate well to the NFL. That doesn't mean that I think he comes into Lumen Field and he starts lighting everybody up. I really think that if this Seahawks defense can get after him and can get after him early, it's going to change – his game plan, it's going to change the Broncos' game plan. And if he can be uncomfortable, we've seen that's when Bo makes his mistakes, even when he was at Oregon. When Dub was able to get pressure on him, that's when you saw a rare interception or you saw errant throws that didn't typically happen. Seattle can get after him. I think that you might see not your typical Bo Nix. You'll see more of a 65% completion Bo Nix as opposed to that 75, 80% that he was hitting in college. Yeah. And I'm on the same page with you at, with, with Bo Nix, you know, I think he's legit. I think he's going to be solid. Um, you know, that pick of by the Falcons of Michael Penix at what was it? Nine overall. That was, yeah. that was shocking. Weird. Um, but Bo Nix being taken, I think he's legit. Also, I think it's just a tough environment to come in for the first game, yep. especially in, in your NFL, NFL debut. But, I expect a good matchup. It's going to be a very entertaining game, and we'll see what happens um, for both sides. 
Yeah, when you have, uh, you know, when you, you're going against the 12s in your first game, that's never fun. Plus, look, Bo's never won in Seattle. I He hasn't done it. I hope, you know, one day maybe he can play like the Seattle Sea Dragons in the XFL and he can do it again. <laughs> like, that would be awesome. I'm Look, I like Bo Nix. I'm going to be honest. I got to cover him for two years in college. I think that Bo Nix is the type of leader that you want. I don't think that he has the fairy tale start to his NFL career in week one. I think this defense gets after him. They don't have a lot of weapons surrounding Bo Nix right now, and that's going to be difficult for a rookie quarterback. Send the pressure. Leave your guys on islands. Trust your corners. Trust your safeties to make the plays that need to be made and try and get after him. And then offensively, lean on K-9, man. Last year, Denver's defense was one of the worst against the run last year i believe k9 averaged just under 80 yards rushing so if you're a gambling person don't be afraid to kind of look at that i've already bet him at 80 plus uh rushing yards on the day i think that seattle is going to try and run the ball early and that's going to open up the pass game especially in that play action pass let's not forget now ryan grubb he's going to coach his team and he's going to play to his team's strengths and i really do still think it is with that offensive line and with that running game. You can complain a lot about Pete Carroll, but Pete Carroll knew how to get good running backs in to his teams, and K-9 and Charbonnet are just the next iteration of that, and I think that they are going to have a feastful day on the ground. Just to add to the potential difficulty of Bonix having his first start in Seattle, uh, Sean Payton, uh, after the practice on Wednesday, was talking about the Seahawks, defense and specifically Mike McDonald's schemes for defense. He said, they give you a lot of looks. They they'll play their odd front and they'll move that around. They've done a great job. I think in his last two years, his defenses have been second in the league in takeaways. So they're an opportunistic, aggressive defense. The challenge this week is you have the Ravens element when you're, when you're looking at defensive film and yet looking at the Seattle personnel. So you're kind of going back and forth from a cut up standpoint. It's not unusual when you have a new staff. And then he he was also looking at tape of Mike, Mike McDonald during his time in Michigan to try to figure yep. out his schemes and what he might be doing there. So, Yep, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And look, man, I just can't wait for football to be back. Hey, I'll be honest, hand up. I took Seattle in my survivor pool. I did. There you go. I took him. <laughs> I took him. I, I think that Seattle is going to get the job done. I really, really do. This Denver team is weak. One day. I think that they might be able to get it right. Sean Payton, while I might be low on him, he's a good enough coach to build a winner. I've said enough about Bo Nix. I'm not going to keep glazing. But right now, they're not that team, and it's going to be a rough first year in Denver. And I think that Seattle takes advantage early. I really do think that when we come back and people talk about who are the teams that we didn't predict that were kind of sleepers and they turned into playoff teams – just like the Seahawks were two years ago, just like the Rams were last year, I think that coming out of the West, at minimum, Seattle's probably a wild card team, and you're seeing them sneak into the playoffs. Absolutely. Game time is 105 this Sunday in Seattle. It's a high of 80 degrees, and it's going to be sunny, so it's not going to be the the harsh rain, cold you know, right. winter in Seattle yet. It's going to be great weather. It's going to be a great time. Hope to see you there. Thanks for jumping on, and we'll see you guys all on, on the recap.